Right, guys, welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast. My name's Adam, and as always, joined by Baker. How are you, mate? Very well, mate. Very well. First week in the bag. Yeah, good week good. so far as well. And good week for everyone. Good podcast. Good week for everyone. Yeah, and we've had, interestingly, obviously, we've had the fixture in the midweek as well. So, you know, lots to talk about over this weekend. I was particularly happy with what happened yesterday. Others, maybe not so, but it makes it interesting for this weekend. And... We're doing something different now because we're obviously recording now and releasing a video on a Thursday this week. Something that we're going to do every week if we can. Yeah, where possible. Yeah, where possible. So we'll do um, we'll do kind of like a team selection video every week, but there will maybe some runoff from the weekend pod where we've got games on a Monday, for example, that we want to cover. So we're going to cover the United game today. Just a brief few minutes on that. Look at what happened in the Super Cup yesterday. Look at the fixtures for this weekend and then move straight onto our team. So try and keep it short and snappy but if you do like what you see make sure you hit the like button and if you want to see more from us make sure you hit subscribe marvelous get into it man united yeah how did you uh enjoy the end of the game i hated it i absolutely hated it like when it looks like onana's come off the fucking top rope of a wwe ring and <laughs> I, I, I just don't understand it like if you look at the Son penalty, and I'm going to use that as a benchmark because that's what we saw at the weekend, and the amount of contact that was made and the decision that was given, and then you've got like the Tarko um, disallowed goal, and you've got you got others over the weekend, and then for me, Onana comes out and cleans out the defender. I can't remember which defender it was. Um, I think it was uh, it was Dawson that got his head on the ball, wasn't it? But yeah, it was. Um what's his name the guy was at Burnley Collins Collins yeah that's it and like he comes out and he he's late he's so late like it's not like it it's not like the impact has happened at the same time of the header where you get a collision where two players are you know competing for the ball like the header's gone and he's just basically come in and, and poleaxed him I just I just don't get it and it frustrates the hell out of me and there's a lot of people that will say like it's a, a United thing uh, also and all that sort of nonsense but it's just crap it's just rubbish refereeing yeah. and for like for, for them to come out within like half an hour of the game finishing and saying yeah that we've made a mistake and all this stuff, like that doesn't that doesn't help anyone really i mean like just get the decision right at the time you're supposed to be the best of the best right and that's why you're reffing and watching the screens on in the premier league you're supposed to be the best of the best just get it right because and for me as well, they've not, they've not been right, those... right a weekend though, mate. Like so, it, it is. Wolves are one is. of those teams that could look at this and go, like, we wrote this off as a zero points in our in our season long plan, and that's a point that could help us at some point during the season. I think Gary O'Neill is going to be like he's going to do well with them. Actually, I think he's going to get better, more out of them than the I mean, he did. They outplayed sure. them all game. Yeah, they outplayed Man United all game. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, on, the, on the decision, that was yeah, it's reckless. Sorry. It's it's reckless. It is what it is. It is reckless. You know, in terms of, and reckless should be a foul. Uh, I've seen loads compare it to like when a keeper takes the player out after they shoot. Like we saw that earlier in the game on Anthony. We saw the Vicar. They're not the same. Like don't like you're just trying to say, oh well, every collision is the same. A guy trying to save a shot is very different than that's not my ball, but I'm going to go for it anyway. And I'm just going to fly a man, you know, is that's reckless what Anana did. Even elements of carelessness, you know, where you basically put your body on the line for a striker coming through, which is more the Vicario world, which is more what uh, Saad in the first half. Careless can be a foul in letters of the law, but it's a lot more subjective. You're very rarely going to get overturned a subjective, you know, a subjective careless action. Um especially if the ball was just flown out of play. I think if um, if Collins had headed the ball out of play, then got taken it out, I yeah. kind of got it. Agreed. But because he heads it back into play, feels very different. Well, it's because it's Dawson um, that heads it back into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah exactly. But... It wasn't even, wasn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't even the player that was with the ball. It was yeah. another guy. It, it's yeah. just, it, it is crappy. Um, apart from that, though, the presence of Anana was... It was visible all game. He he does make a big difference to to them in terms of the influence in their team. But I'm not a hundred percent sure it's a good thing. Because they almost 
played too much to it. I felt like Man United all game. It was like, we'll give it back. And then the, then and then Wolves were like, you have it. Have it back there because what you have got is players like Wamba Saka, who, who's not good enough at passing the ball. Mm. Like you're over the moon to let Wamba Saka have the ball in the bottom, back, you know, first area of the pitch. Yeah. In, and it got him into trouble every time. Casemiro, who's pretty rusty from pre-season, hated receiving the ball under pressure. Yeah. Um, that's that's a big issue. If they try to, it's like they tried to play this per- perfect transition game when they haven't got perfect transition players. You know, not right now. Yeah. Um, and the wingers were just awful. Oh, and God, God, that show was horrific. I, I'm actually trying I, to question enough, how I went. Got a I actually went to go to tweet it. I actually went to go to tweet it, and you beat me to it. Of like, it's genuinely an insult that play, people that got Granacho got got his clean sheet points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> disgusting three pointer. Yeah, because I, I just, so you just bad. knew at fifty eight. Yeah, just knew at fifty eight minutes he was just going to tick over and then get subbed off because he just had an absolute horror show. And I look because you, they don't want the ball. <laughs> like it, having people that. If you've got a whole team of players that don't really like the ball, so wan doesn't like the ball, he prefers to do the stuff that's not on the ball. I know he gets the assist, blah, 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 but he doesn't like the ball. Garnacho and Anthony, they don't like the ball. Like They'll try and do their own stuff with it, but other than that, yeah. they're that guy in five aside that you, you almost apologise to the other team for at the end of the game that he's in your team. Because... <laughs> You hate him. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, oh, he scored again in five sides, he, but I hate him. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, they need they need Hoyland up there as soon as possible so they can get Rashford on that left side, Sancho on that yeah. right, and I think that make that will make a huge difference to them. And I'm almost huge. glad, you know, sitting with Onana and his distribution ability now is that we're at a perfect time to play them almost if they're gonna, you know, because his distribution was good out wide and wide right and left, right. So, and that's a danger mm. for Tottenham with such a high line is that. You know, you can get caught out, especially with narrow fullbacks as well. You know, that, yeah. that width, like a Rashford on the left is, you know, he picks the ball up in, you know, halfway line or whatever and drives it to that half space. And it's an absolute, it's an absolute disaster for us. Yeah. You don't, you don't need it. Interestingly, I think that, that at home you don't, away from home. Yeah. Against us. I wouldn't be upset if they played Anthony. Like, oh, well, I would be upset almost. Sorry if they played Anthony Garnacho and Rashford because actually what you want is the big the runners off the ball yeah. like, that are going to try and get in behind. So I think at home that's a really early lesson for them when they play Forest um, next week. You need some people that want to dominate in the opponent's half. Otherwise, it comes back too quickly. Yeah. Every time they went forward, it was like back it goes again. The number of times that Wolves were like four on three mm. and just didn't make enough of it. Because they're just not good so, enough, right? <laughs> yeah. And they, they won't get but, away with that against better teams. But I don't think it's enough with for Tottenham, which could be a really good attacking team. I don't think it's enough with Forrest after it to take him out. I kind of really want to take Brilliant. one of them yeah. out. Like, well, I've got both of them. Um, but it's probably, it's probably rash. It's probably and not rash. It's probably Bruno, but it's, but it's probably rash to take either. That makes I got sense. you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Cool. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. We've covered that. So let's move on to let's move on to City because obviously they played yeah. last night, um, and you know important things here, particularly around captaincy, is that obviously Harlan got ninety minutes. But just something you know you just wanted to pick up on on the on the pass maps. This this pass map is so very different just because of the way they set up obviously Grealish and Cole Palmer come in and they're just a lot wider Mm. a lot wider use some width so Pep you know thinks a lot of stuff and does a lot of things but uh, a second Grealish came back in the team you were like well maybe we'll go back to trying to pin people out wide and and overplay but you do look at them under City and think Mares, Gundo and KDB like, if they were in any other team and you took those three out, that team goes from, like, top four contenders to relegation contenders. That's yeah. just an enormous amount of creativity that gets taken out. Very few teams that can still dominate games when they've lost those three players. And they did. Cole Palmer looked fantastic. Really was straight back on it. I like seeing Foden as the closest man to Haaland. 
Um, I think really seen. I mean, Rodri was pushing H- yeah, him yeah. having Kovacic, you know, alongside that. They're, they're full double pivot, you know, mm. um, which gives him a bit of license. And you know, I I know for, we all know um, like how much of the ball Rodri controls in that in in that mm. game or in that in that system. And I see it from a, like a so rare perspective, how good he is. And that then translate to the bonus. So when he does get, when he does get a return of some kind, right, he's like, he's in it. Like he's in it now, especially without they, KDB. Yeah, they do. It's a really weird world now where they need more numbers in attack um, because Harlem was just easy to mark. So if you looked at what's the positives of Haaland, he's still sitting right up there as high as number nine. He's not had a drop to get the ball. He's still in the box for every cross, but none of them get to him yeah. because they're not overly stretching the team. You're not panicking as much as you would do. And therefore they just leave two men on him all the time. You know, Sevilla just left them on it. And we've seen that a lot in big games. So this isn't an unusual thing we saw in midweek. We saw the same in the Champions League final. We've seen it in a number of big games where he's not been there. Um, the question you have to keep telling you, or question you have to keep pushing yourselves um, is, do you just trust City? Do you trust City to score three goals? Because if you do, there's actually less goals in the team from other spaces now. So his percentage share of goals is probably going up. His percentage of goal involvement is probably going up. Um, his propensity for bonus is probably going up. All of those things are likely to almost improve in this team than last season's. But he's got to get shots away. <laughs> but he's got to get shots away. He didn't. You know, so, yeah. so I mean, it's a brilliant 48 hours for Mo captains. Like yeah. Bruno being terrible, because most people, if they haven't got Mo, have got both Bruno and Rash. Yeah. <laughs> so... That was incredible for the Monday night. <laughs> and then last night, Haaland playing a full game and not even a great full game um, is not good. I don't see it having any impact on minutes, by the way. I, 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 no. Like, I still expect to play 90 minutes on the weekend. Yeah, unless they're winning, unless they're winning 3-0 and you can just see him come off at like 60, 65. I, I think he... And I don't think we see that happening. No, not we? against Newcastle. Think... No, I think even at two, you, like he'd be respectful enough of how good Newcastle are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. I'm, I'm firmly committed that he would play, you know, unless they're free up, he plays 80 minutes plus. Um, so what, then so then if we're talking about less running, if we, say again? Know, he's doing less running. Well, that's but true. But that's his, yeah, that's, his, that's kind of his MO really, isn't it? And I guess he's if you build, around if you build, if you build the team around that kind of player that doesn't, I don't want to say doesn't move so much, he does do a lot of good movement, but that doesn't have to maybe be as mobile as like other players around the team, then like 60 games a season at 90 minutes is, you know, he's running, he's running maybe 6K a game. Like, and if he's, mm. if everyone else is running 10, like, like he's actually not running as far, obviously. So <laughs> simple maths, quick maths, and all that. Maybe you could but, turn up and do that again tomorrow. Yeah, you know probably. I mean? like I, probably. I don't, I don't think there's a, there's a big issue there. Yeah. Trying to predict what city we're going to have turn up and how they're going to set up and is it, you know, right or wrong? Well, I think that entices gambles. Yeah. So, you know, if you're on Mo this week, like it's no brainer, isn't it? You just you absolutely captain Mo. Yeah, yeah, without without a shadow, and you expect to you expect to win that battle too. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like you, you should do. I think mean, you know my first takeaway from game week one is that people that went mo have already you know are doing very very well, and obviously you know <laughs> you can get lucky or unlucky when it plays through um, this weekend. Uh, despite being a non mo owner. Uh, actually, for the kind of good of the game, I'd like to see the Mo owners win this week. Just for the chaos, maybe maybe not twenty to one, you know, <laughs> tight goal scoring. But uh, but I uh, but I think is that um, you know at home, realistically, in my brain, I was thinking <clears throat> ten to fifteen points. Yeah, the Mo. <clears throat> that's what you're expecting, and that's genuine. I know the predicted models are probably having like seven or whatever, but really. In my head, I'm expecting a 13 pointer or so. Yeah, two returns, two returns, clean sheet, 
and the bonus is like 15 points, mm. right? So that's kind of in my head. In my head, no, no one would, no one would be surprised if Mo scored twice at the weekend, right? There's, there's no surprises if Mo scores twice, no. and I, and I wouldn't be no. surprised if Harlan scores at the weekend. I'd probably be no. a little bit surprised if he scored twice. Yeah, and I and I'd be if, shocked if he scored a hat trick type thing. If but it, if, Mo if it walked, yeah, if it walked away, fifteen points to Mo, seven points to Harland, I'd shake hands and move on for me. Yeah. And I think Mo I mean, and did the same and go, yeah, that's thanks very much. Let's, you know, it's nine points, points if Harland scores, though. That's the thing. Wow. <laughs> Although, yeah. although, well, although Newcastle have Newcastle have two talismanic strikers, right? So that's exactly, yeah. And that's what it does put me off on it is is it wouldn't surprise me, you know, is if if one of those guys is in the bonus, yeah. genuinely wouldn't surprise me. Someone was talking to uh, me about this about the the, like the Tottenham um, the Tottenham thing because we don't have a recognised striker like other mid could could talismanic strikers be good against us? And it, it is possible. I mean, it's not going to happen against United this week because again, they don't have any strikers. But yeah. <laughs> but going forward, just as a note, point of note for us to remember, and I think this is important, is that teams playing against Tottenham with a talisman, you know, can still pick up max bonus in a loss. Like that's we need to remember that. Like if, yeah, if any team scores two against us and it's the same striker, it doesn't matter who scores for us, really. Right. <laughs> it's a really good point. Yeah. It's a really, really good point. Um and there's more and more teams like that, isn't there? Well, talking about talismanic strikers, I'm gonna bring the fixtures up because do you think Watkins is legitimately an option if people are getting cold feet and nervous over Haaland for this weekend? Because those that those that do have Watkins generally don't have Mo, right? So is Correct. is is he an option? Is that the way worried? to take it on? Like, it, do you know what I mean? Is that... it is, I think there's a chance there. Yeah, but I also think that is if you. I made a sort of joke on Twitter earlier saying I'm going to enjoy the maths beef this weekend because it will get weird. Like people are going to be like, I got 40 points for this versus you got two points for this. And you're like, but because uh, you can you can just keep adding stuff in and you say, well, actually, but you've spent 12 and a half million on a midfielder that I haven't. And I'll spread that around here. And I got these points and these points and that offsets what you've done on this point. Ultimately, what's going to happen is whatever points you end up with as a total across two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, till we probably want wild card. In fact, probably till game week 38, then you kind of work out who works out best. Yeah. They're all bragging rights. We can all work through these bits of it. But if you get over-focused on it, then it's, yeah. I just feel like it's, you're just trying to, you're, you're, you're playing of, uh, you're playing certain types of people as opposed to yeah, yeah. playing the game. And I'm yeah. like, because because I could say, well, how about Harlan cap plus owning Watkins versus Salah cap and owning Jao Pedro or something like that? And you're like, well, that doesn't work because I've still got Harlan. Like, none of it works. It doesn't <laughs> matter how you're working. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't Watkins, think Harlan's going to hurt as much this week, though, just generally speaking. Because no. because Salah's like 30% owned and I think everyone captains him. Almost that's the case, though. What about if this is the only week that we get to that those that are captured Harlan get to enjoy it? Well, yeah, there's that as well. Yes, that, there you know is. I mean? that. Like if he's only one forty percent owned or something like that, then you're like, well, I can actually get some points if Harlan does well. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do. You have to look at your own sort of risk preferences of that world. And uh, when I mean about, that, I mean sort of more emotionally of how it would tilt you type space. If you go somebody off of harland and mo you are fighting two battles yeah as opposed to if you choose the harland one you're just fighting the Mo's really yeah um because everybody else you're gaining off of everybody else is going to be less than 100 percent owned you know even mo will definitely be less than 100 percent owned yeah um so yeah, I do feel there's a bit of is this the right time to pick the battles and 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 do it? Cuz I've looked at it and thought like I think Madison's a great option. A really great option at home to Man United this yeah. weekend. <sighs> do you, would it surprise you if Man U came out and done us? No. no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um I mean, do, do you, I mean go you can go low key rogue do you like do you hate a stupid man away at Wolves? Hate it. Do you hate Chilwell away at West Ham because <laughs> yeah we're not going to get we're not going to get many Chilwell points after this week. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Because because there will be people that cap him in game week three, and by that time he'll be over hundred percent owned and yeah, yeah, yeah. stuffed. Um, 
do you go Saka at Palace? Mm, I think that's probably a stretch too far just because of Palace's defensive capability. They're better defensively than the other teams we're talking about. The West Ham, the Wolves, the... Well, yeah. even United to an extent. They were up there. But some United. sickos like playing it out, don't they? They like yeah, they like yeah. going, right, everybody else has played and I get the last game of the game. This is true. This is true. Yeah, yeah. You're sitting there like much. you're sitting there in your mini league, like I'm two points behind the person in front of me and I've still got my captain. I've, got, I've still got a sack of cash. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yes, there are some um, sick, sick ones out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Saturday's gonna be ugh, so just because of the way it's worked out. So we've got no early game. So you can you can actually you know get stuff done in the morning. It's nice. <laughs> and, and, well, you've got no game until three o'clock, really, because the first game yeah. is no, no one. No one cares. Um, and then, sadly, I mean, what people might not realize is it's it's, it's even bigger this this one because all the Mo owners also own Jao Pedro, but not all the non Mo guys own what Jao Pedro. So they actually get. Double bubble at three o'clock. Bang! Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. With, that, with Villa with, on like... the Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So, like, people addicted to like looking at their live yeah, rank but... and all that stuff are going to be like, "Oh my god! Oh my god!" Like, yeah, like there's some but... there's some boomer owners out there in the Harlan camp, in the Harlan camp, right? In the Nomo camp. Yeah. So there's a bit of there's a bit of offset there. I mean, we could do this. We could do this for for hours, mate. I think we should move on to our teams <laughs> and try so, and try and get out would of here you, if we can. Yeah. Watkins, would I cap him? I, probably not. I'm just a bit scared of last week. Um, okay. And, you know, Everton really need points. That, mm. that nobody wants to be lost two in a row. So if they do somehow, the longer it goes on, the more dogged it's going to be. Um, yeah, not convinced of it enough. Very happy to own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like Everton were pretty forthcoming last week. And if they display any kind of anything like that against Villa's high line, it could be a quite open game, which actually with Watkins, mm. you know, he, he's not only, he's not only like the, he's not only sort of your talismanic man in the box, he's a big channel runner as well. So, you know, he could be really good for that if the game's end to end. Part of the thing that puts me off, off Watkins cap is, how Marvin? would I feel? Nah, if he gets a pen. Like, like you genuinely think you could get a minor score with Watkins. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> like okay. it's possible. Do you know what I mean? As much as it's possible, we can hammer it. If he got a pen, would I back him to score against small arms Pickford? <laughs> no, I, don't think I still wouldn't. I would welcome that with open arms, funnily enough. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I can play through just some really horrible things. Of, I'm not putting my heart through it. Yeah, fair enough. Right. So start with, well, you're leading the way. So we'll start with me on my team so for people listening um i am going to be rolling the transfer and you're shaking your head already and i'll explain why in a second <laughs> for people that are listening um so rolling the transfer salah captain and just making one a couple of substitutions uh well three i would say um so turner in for pickford i've got colwell in for udogi so taking double chelsea defense um against west ham and i've brought in kabore from luton for saka <laughs> I didn't even say it was straight face. <laughs> so yeah, so so my team is Turner, Chilwell, Saliba, Colwell, Kabore, Salah, Captain, Mitoma, Madison, Bruno, Jao Pedro, and Harland. Full bench wanker. Love it. Yeah, so, so Kabore, in, Kabore in will case sub people out. People haven't kept up with that. What Adam has done is put Saka on the bench because he's his most highly owned player. <laughs> Knowing that he has to then, it will definitely get auto sub points when Kabore, who's not playing, will come off. In fact, what I should do, what I should do is I should take the player that plays earliest in the game week. Why aren't you putting Haaland on the bench? What, just in case Mo doesn't play? Just in case Mo doesn't. I can't take that risk. You can't take that risk. That's 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 a step too far. But what I probably should do is if I you're playing I effective think... ownership, you're playing effective ownership on bench wankery. Yeah, basically. But yeah, yeah. But no, what I should do is I should put Mitoma on the bench, really, because Mitoma is probably the highest owned player that plays early in the game week. So then those auto sub points stay they st they stay off my yeah. thing. Because if you do it right at the end of the game week, what's the point? Because then you just automatically yeah, auto work. subs in. Doesn't that's it. Work, yeah. Changing it. Mitoma's on the bench. Thanks. So yeah, that's that's me. I, I don't see any reason to um to to make to make a move this week again. As you said, Bruno could be okay, um and you know Forest week after that, so no no dramas there. Yeah. Madison obviously good. 
Jao Pedro, I mean, like the Brighton have still got another fixture in them as well. Um, you know, Arsenal's fixtures are great. Saliba's fine. Whatever happens with Gabriel, Gabriel comes in, especially with obviously Timber being now out for um, for seven, mm-hmm. eight, nine months or whatever. And then, yeah, double Chelsea defence. And I've taken a, I'm taking a punt on Turner. Oh, so actually I am going to have a, we are going to have players in the first game. I never even thought of that. We've all got bloody Turner yeah, in the that, first That game. makes it more fun. We'll get Turner <laughs> Friday night. Brilliant. So we have games on every day. So yeah, that's where I am. And I'm happy. I'm happy. And no moves. No moves. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. No moves. No moves. And moving on to you. I'll let you let you talk this one out, mate. Yeah, yeah. So the opening one is a decision, but I'm really comfortable with the decision. It's part of the reason why I was happy to be with Onano is that I was really comfortable to play Turner in, in um, game week one. Interestingly, as you were talking there about no strikers on the pitch for Man United or Tottenham, I was like, God, if Man United do clean, <laughs> then Onana, like that's going to be ten points easy. Yeah. But you have to work on the percentages. You know, I I don't believe they will clean. Um, that's 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 long and short of it. I don't believe they will. Hence, why my midfield has three players from this game: um, Turner in goal, Estupinanchi, Well, Saliba, the standard. Saka, Madison, Bruno, Rash, Matoma. Uh, currently on Harland Cat with Watkins Vice. Um, yeah, if I was to do anything this week, it would be Bruno to Luis Diaz. That's that's what okay. I'd do this week. If I was to do a move, that would have been that would be the one. Um, I just don't know. There's enough strength out there in this election to know that the minutes he's going to play. I think, you know, I thought Liverpool were much better when Curtis Jones came on. Um, and I think in general, in the last season and in pre-season, we've seen it. Curtis Jones, and we moaned about it for years when he used to play on the right side, but was always pretty decent when he played the left centre midfield. I think they've got to do that, which means that good old Gakpo's got to go somewhere or is on the bench, which creates an issue. Um, and then it feels like a Darwin game. And then you're like... There's four into two there. Just it's so hard to pick that that uh, Liverpool attack that I don't feel it's worth it when I still think it's a really good fixture for Bruno's week and then Forest should be a very very good fixture. Um, plus, also with that money sort of tied up in him, you can go so many different ways. Mm. And I'm like, I'd rather have that. I'd rather have that little bit of extra time this week. So I'm not going to do it. Um, if I if you know. Gun to said, I've got to make a move. Bruno to the SDS would be the move for me. Yeah. The only thing, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not going to do this, but the only thing that could have tempted me was like a Bruno to Bumo. Um, mm. Just because now the fixtures for me, I mean, yeah, we took Tottenham out of the equation given the bias and whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, Bumo's fixtures now obviously are ridiculous. and So, so good. Do you, I do think we're going to be in a space where we have, Quite either quite a bit of money in the bank or an eighth attacker very soon. Well, this 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 is it. This is it. I mean, I'm mean, even Unless like low key like... was looking at yeah, exactly. I was low key looking at like Salah to Bumo next week and having like six and a half million in the bank, and then thinking I can't even spend this money. Like I don't actually want to spend this money anywhere. Like the, the good part about it is I don't think it means we don't really have to chase price rises. We can we can yeah, wait yeah, as yeah, long yeah. as possible. Um and yeah and you're going to have good flexibility. So once you've used two transfers, actually, you're going to have a bit of money. So it's going to be a bit easier to then wait, you know, if you've still got one. So, um, and Chelsea is just a really big watch, isn't it? Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of us are looking at it and thinking, Jackson, James, Chilwell, how many of those do I want in game week three? Albeit it's really difficult. Yeah. I mean, it, in my team at the moment, the obvious make weight would be Watkins to Jackson or one of the defenders in Saliba or Stupinan to James. Um, it's not an easy move, either of those, because the fixtures for both of them in game week three are pretty good. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> um, and Watkins away at Burnley is certainly no bad game. Um, so, yeah, game week three, there's so much that could potentially happen after this week that two transfers is definitely worth it. 
We'll leave it there, mate. Good stuff. I think we have just locked in the uh, locked in the thirty minutes, as you were saying while the intro was playing to me. I said, "Let's go twenty twenty five and you went, "It'll be thirty. And I think it is thirty. But if you have any um, if you have any dilemmas, captaincy questions, anything like that, drop them down in the comments. And remember, if you have liked it, please do like the content. It really, really helps us. Costs nothing for you to do so. Um, and we'd be really grateful. If you do have a comment, feedback on our content, obviously just drop it down in the uh, just drop it down in the comments, or or come find us on Twitter. Baker is at Baker FPL three four three, and I'm at Above Average FPL. I realise I haven't done that for a long time, so you know if you want to check us out on Twitter, head over there. And yeah. um, and if you do want to discuss in a bit more depth, Patreon is the way. You get into our Discord. There's a small little group of us. We chat all the games. We the plots you'll see on Sunday nights, we share them as the games go on. So you haven't got to wait for the stream and that. You've got that for yourself. We share as much data and good stuff as we can. And we're there for the chat. And because there's not many of us, it's easy to do so. So And there's some competitions in there as well. Fun competitions in there. We try and keep it, it interesting. Um, so yeah. Patreon.com forward slash above average FPL. Bang on, mate. Bang on. Well, good luck for game week two. See you soon, mate. Cheers, mate.